Hello there, and welcome to how to manage a serverless application on AWS Lambda with Elastic Observability. Now, serverless is becoming more and more popular. The number of sites using serverless and specifically running it on AWS Lambda is growing and managing both that application and the Lambda service is becoming a necessity. Now, so in this video, we'll cover how to deploy your serverless application on AWS Lambda with Elastic APM agents. Then on Elastic Observability, we'll show you how you can look at traces, logs, and metrics from your functions. And in a separate video, I'll cover how to load up the AWS A integration on Elastic so you can manage AWS Lambda as a service. Now to follow along in this video, uh, with respect to the application, just go to the QR code. It will direct you to the GitHub location where the you can git clone the application and follow along on this demo. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is to go to cloud.elastic.co and register for an account. And once you've registered and signed up, you'll get a 14-day free trial. And once you have your login information, Go ahead and log into Elastic Cloud. And once we're there, we'll simply navigate to the observability section of Elastic Cloud and specifically go to the APM capabilities. Now, as you'll notice, we have no services yet, which means we've got to add some data. We'll simply go to add some data and we'll get instructions on how to configure our application to send data to Elastic. APM server. Now, in particular, we're going to be using Node.js based application here. Now, in addition to showing you how to give you commands on how to install um, the Elastic APM node in Node.js, you'll also see a few environment variables. First is the endpoint you'll want to send your data to. Next is your credential information. Now I'm going to copy this information and save it and then utilize that in the configuration for my application when we go and deploy it. So now let's switch over to our terminal and configure and deploy the application. Okay, so I've already pulled the application from Git and you'll see that there's a couple of directories here plus a file called env.json. If you look in there, you'll see where you insert the APM server URL and the token. In addition, I also set my AWS region. Now pre-configure this to save some time. So next, let's go and deploy the application. Now, before we actually deploy it, let's take a look at how we've configured it. And let me pull up the serverless YAML file. And in here, you'll see a couple of things. First, you'll see that we're using layers in AWS Lambda. And we're in particular going to be adding in the APM agent layers. And this allows us to simply add the APM agent from Elastic without having to modify the code. Now, we've preloaded AWS with the Elastic extension and node of the components to make up the agent on all the regions. So you just have to refer to the ARN and the specific version number, and that'll load up during the deployment. Additionally, you'll see that the environment variables are also getting loaded, such as the APM server location and your token. Now this will all get configured and loaded during the installation process on AWS Lambda for your application. So now let's just simply deploy my application. Now we're using the serverless framework here to deploy the application on AWS Lambda. And you'll see that it's loading up, creating a CloudFormation stack, and it'll take a little bit to, to deploy. I'm gonna pause and come back once it's deployed and we'll continue. Okay, the application's now deployed. You can see it took about two minutes to deploy. And from the deployment, we see that the functions, the consumer and the producer bits have been deployed. 
plus their respective URLs. Now the URL is important because we're gonna need this for our load generator to drive some traffic so we can see traces on Elastic. So let's just go and turn on the load generator. And there we go. So this will start generating some traffic to help create traces, metrics, and generate some logs so we can see it on Elastic. So let's switch over and see what's popping up. Okay, now that we've deployed the application and the traffic generator, let's see what Elastic APM is showing. There you go. Now we can see that we have both our functions, the consumer and producer populating data, and we also have the traffic generator sending information. Now, not only can we see all of our functions in the traffic generator in a list form, but we can actually see a service map showing the trace from the traffic generator or the node client to the producer function, which in tail will call the consumer function. And we'll take a look at the trace in a little more detail. But on the service map, we can get a little bit of detail on each one of the functions, such as what the average latency is, the throughput, or if there's any failed transactions. Let's dive in. As we get a little bit of an overview on the producer functionality, we can see the latency over the lifespan. It's already been on for a few minutes here, the throughput, and the transactions that are coming through it. Let's take a look at the transaction for a minute. And for the transactions, we can see similar information. Additionally, Elastic also uh, logs the cold starts. In a Lambda, you're going to get a cold start. And we don't have any failed transactions or any errors right now. But we do have the trace. As you can see, the trace for dev slash produce comes in, and it makes a call to the consumer. You can also see, in addition to the traces, the logs that are coming in from the Lambda functions. Here we see both logs from the consumer and from the producer. So as you can see, we can not only get trace information from Lambda functions, but also specific key metrics like latency and throughput and logs for my Lambda functions, giving me a unified experience for managing my Lambda application on Elastic Observability.